All right, everybody, before we get started, just a quick update about the book. We're going to be doing a Friday release of the episodes, starting with chapter one this Friday, and we'll keep on going every Friday from here. So again, thank you very much for your support. And remember to let me know what you think and post it in the comment section below. I appreciate you. I thank you for listening. And okay, let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to Wesley the Writer. I'm Wesley, and today we're going to talk about a little bit about the world space that I had built for the um, for the characters in the book to basically play around in and do some terrible things in. Uh, that's so messed up saying it like that. But anyway, um, if you're following the release, you know, following me up to the release of my book, I appreciate the support. Um, Again, if you have any um, anything to add, any comments that you would um, like to throw my way about the book or about anything else, if you want to know more about my process or how things go about with me and how I do things, uh, be, feel, feel free to reach out to me. Again, you can hit me up on Twitter at the writer Wesley, or if I know you in person, we can just chat. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's episode. So, like I had mentioned before in the last episode, um, I had basically based the world of South, the entire series, on seven cities, on the seven cities in Virginia. Um, and that's because, well, <laughs> it's it's what I know. <laughs> I'll just put it to you like that. And so, you know, I... Just growing up in the area, and I'm pretty sure those who have also grown up in the area will start to, well, for one, start to understand like what areas IRL that I'm really talking about. But then, two, you'll be able to kind of see what I mean when I say certain things about, you know, making time for things and making your own time to, you know, or making your own fun rather, because. Let's face it, where we live at, there ain't a whole lot to do unless you got a bankroll. And I found myself kind of in that camp my entire life when I was coming up. Not so much recently. I mean, they've been adding a lot of different things that you can kind of just go to for free. And there has been a really good movement as far as like art and stuff in our area. But um, yeah, you know, I feel like you know, I'm, when I was writing the book, I was thinking about the times when I was younger. And I I remember coming up that there just weren't, there wasn't a whole lot to really keep the focus. But as I got older, I realized that, you know, the camps that we were putting ourselves in started to become, like started to shift with the internet, the introduction of the internet and how the internet has helped um, make more conversations happen that need to happen. Um, and with that, you know, I feel like with the growth of our area, a lot of the things ha that were an issue aren't as much an issue anymore. But that's a two-edged sword because now there's so much to keep you away from your community that the growth that we were after as a community, I feel has shifted to isolationism, but that's kind of worldwide now. As, you know, all of the developed countries have their um, their unification stripped away for the most part because everybody's kind of in their own little bubbles, in their own little social circles, and to an extent, that's okay. But if you're alone, you know, like if you don't really have anybody to actually see or visit, if you're an isolationist not by choice it can start to play on your mind you know you can start to feel as though you can't really trust anybody or you you know you're being haunted by some memory of you know what could be or some thought of what could be or whatever and that breeds a restlessness that can only be satiated with consumption and I talked a little bit before about being a consumer in the last episode um, but that's the other side of the coin, 
you know when we are so much when we're so focused on how we can alleviate our pain or alleviate our boredom or whatever you know it tends to lead us to do things that we probably shouldn't do we start to getting get into things that we probably shouldn't get into and you know just thinking about the lessons that I've been learning over the course of the last few years with reading the Bible and you know listening to different lectures from um, Dr. Peterson or listening to audio books on self-help for business or whatever you know I've been listening to a lot of men and women saying the same thing and that is we need to stop focusing so much on self-placation and we need to start focusing on dealing with what's around us dealing with the people around us getting into actual conversations with people and really focusing on our quality of living with the people who are around us when we're not grounded in something we can be swayed by anything and to have deep roots somewhere requires you to be known by people for something I feel like over the last few years we've been witness to upheavals and social structures that wouldn't really occur if we weren't flooded with so much information and that's really been I feel the crux of our civilization for so long it's just the abundance of information um I'm not saying that information is wholly to blame but I am saying that because we have an an um what would you say an unstoppable tap of information or of like I'm thinking of plumbing terms here so you have to bear with me but like we can't turn the speak it of information off it's just there unless we get rid of our cell phones but I love playing Genshin Impact too much to do that But okay, let's let's dial it back a little bit and talk about the world space still because like I said, I had based it off of the seven cities and a lot of the areas in the seven cities have been influential as far as um throughout the first settlements and things like that, with the um you know, some of the first ports and stuff being built in the area. And I think it's cool from a historical aspect that we had um, that well that I've grown up in an area that has been subject to so much change over the years it has so much deep history in the colonization of America that I felt a bit attached to the idea that there was a lot that could be um, changed just based off of specific influences from other places um, and those influences are good most times but they can also be really bad too um, so many different ideas being shared over the years you know th those things can be dangerous um, I'm remembered I'm, I'm remembering an episode of Kyle Hill's um, show that he puts on YouTube about info hazards and you know we like to talk a lot about info hazards and stuff these days pertaining to the internet but the bible itself was an info hazard um, anything that you write down pertaining to society in, in any time frame is a potential info hazard because it affects people it affects people in a way where they have to change based off of what they're taught from that article, from that leaflet, from that poem. You know, it information changes us not just on a physical, on a um, metaphysical level, but also on a spiritual, mental, and physical level. It it shifts our perception of the world that which we've come to know and that's 
the power in information. It allows us to change. That what that change is, well, that's up to what you have in you. And what you have in you is pretty much predicated on where you've where you've um, grown up, um, what your own personal values are, what your own personal beliefs are. But also you have to be willing to change. And a lot of this just kind of circles around the same concepts. And that's why I feel like I was really influenced by my area um, to write something like this, because we're a port, you know, we're a port state. We have a bunch of um, we have access to the ocean, which connects to other parts of the world. And that form of influence, I would say, um, really helped to shape what the book is referencing and a lot of how the characters change, a lot of how business is conducted and the motivations of the main villain. <laughs> But yeah, um, so really the mindset behind the book has been that um, as far as the location is concerned, it's all about how the information was presented, how it comes across. And, you know, once I get finished with this book, I think that I think that the whole picture will definitely um, reflect what I'm talking about. So. Again, in conclusion, I thank you so much for following the series. I thank you for just bearing with me throughout the entire process. Um, again, I am looking to have everything posted on Friday. So when you hear this, um, just be on the lookout. Um, yeah. And I guess with that said, I'll catch you all in the next episode. Um, don't be afraid to leave me a comment of any kind and well, I'll catch you then. Peace.